All right, YouTube, today we're gonna to take a look at the kinetic energy of a rolling object. In this case, we've got a sphere of some mass m and radius r. Now in this problem, we're gonna say that this sphere is rolling along without slipping. And the fact this ball is rolling without slipping is gonna become relevant later on in the math behind what's going on here. See, when this ball is rolling, it's actually experiencing two different types of motion. See, anytime an object rolls along, it's actually exhibiting two different types of motion. The first being rotation, which is simply the turning of the object around a central axis. And the second being translation, which is nothing other than the lateral motion of that object through space, kind of like a bullet shooting through space or a car driving down the road. Now to find the total kinetic energy of our rolling object, we simply need to take a look at the kinetic energy of each of these two independent types of motion. Now we know the kinetic energy of a rotating object is given by 1 half i omega squared, where i is the rotational moment of inertia and omega is the angular velocity of this rotating object. And the kinetic energy of an object in translation is given by 1 half mv squared. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already know that the kinetic energy of a translating object is dependent on the linear velocity of the object. And the reason I bring that up is because this linear velocity is completely different from this angular velocity. These are two totally different quantities, and that's gonna present an issue in a little while here. Now, going back to a rolling object, if rolling is nothing other than the summation of rotation and translation, then the kinetic energy of a rolling object is going to be the sum of these two kinetic energies. Now there's one issue with this equation as it appears, and that is that we have both angular velocity and linear velocity in this function. So before we can actually use this equation, we need to relate the angular velocity to the linear velocity of this rolling object. Now going way back to the beginning, we said this sphere was going to roll along without slipping. And because it's rolling without slipping, we can create a relationship between the angular and linear velocities. So when this sphere is rolling along without slipping, this point right here, which touches the ground, does not move. See, in translation, anytime something's moving forward, all points on that object are moving forward at the same velocity. In the case of rotation, you might have the top of this wheel rotating forward, the bottom moving backward, and this central point right here about which it's rotating not moving at all. And realize, looking at the bottom of these two objects, if the tangential velocity of this rotating wheel backwards is the same as the forward velocity from translation of the wheel, then ultimately when we add these two motions together, we're going to find the bottom of the wheel doesn't move at all. Now mathematically what that means is our tangential velocity needs to equal the radius of the wheel multiplied by its angular velocity. See if the forward translational velocity of the ball is equal to the tangential velocity, which we know is given by r omega, then the ball is going to roll without slipping. And this is gonna be true for all objects which roll without slipping. So now with this relationship, we can clean up our formula for the kinetic energy of our rolling object. Rearranging this equation for omega, we can substitute this equation in here for angular velocity. And knowing the rotational moment of inertia of a sphere, we can substitute this term in here for our inertia. And it's here I wanna point out something that is tremendously important. You'll notice we have an r squared term here from our inertia and an r squared term here dealing with our angular velocity. And those two are gonna cancel out. And this is incredibly important because what this tells us is the size of this sphere as it rolls along has absolutely no role in the kinetic energy of that sphere as it rolls. Cleaning this up a bit, we can see that 
The kinetic energy of our rolling sphere is given by 7 tenths mv squared. So according to this equation, the mass of this sphere affects the kinetic energy, as does the shape, because this 2 fifths carried through and gave us this 7 tenths. But the size of the sphere, its radius, did not matter at all. So I hope you found this useful in understanding the relationship between rolling, rotation, and translation. And on that note, that's all for now.